Hey there. Welcome. Welcome, Shay. What's going on? So, you know, it's so interesting to me because I'm really learning a, a, a lot more about, uh, about what's going on in the world with, particularly with true crime. And I think it's really important to say to everybody that this entire phenomena, if you will, of true crime being uh, all over the internet, really, and I know I said this to some of you, right? The It really has a lot to do with the way the mainstream media went away from, if you will, they went away from uh, reporting news. Think about it, the last five or six years, right? And I know I've said this, but I want, this is, you know, kind of what I want to say about the, the parents of laundry and all that kind of stuff. They went so far away from reporting news and more into telling us things they felt and thought about our political scene that we had to take to finding news on our own. And what happened was we created a, I want to say, an international conversation, right? We, we did this international conversation all around true crime, and things that were going on in the world and how we relate to each other, right? So I just wanna stop and say hi. Happy, happy. Tony, what's going on? Shay, uh, Rudy, Rudy Rico, what's going on? So good to see you. Scott, hi, babe, how you doing? Sharon, oh, Australia, so wanna go visit. Um, you know, once everything settles down, <laughs> I still want to see Australia. Laura, good to see you. Jessica, oh, good morning. Yeah, it's early for you. Ooh, okay, I'm on the other side of the night. So I want to talk about the laundry parents as well. And I want to I want to talk about a couple things that are like, ooh, semi-controversial. I love controversy. So a couple things that I want to mention is that we have, in, a, in many, many ways, we've turned the world upside down in terms of how we communicate with each other. Think about this. We've become so mean. <laughs> like, and I mean, like, ready to just, like, just, you know, kind of cancel anybody out there in the world just because they don't agree with us, right? So I just want to say that, um, and I'm going to come to the chat in a minute and say hi to some people, but I just want to get this part out. So I'm going to talk about three things. I do want to talk about um, the idea of being in upset and the idea of someone who doesn't agree with you and what's going on with that. And I think it's really important to say this because um, I want to underline this. My fight for rights or my fight for my point of view doesn't minimize your point of view. And I think that's something that that really is very important that I say, your opinion, your thoughts, your ideas, don't, don't like, they're not less because someone has a different idea. And I really want to just share that. One of the things that really works so well for all of us is that, you know, we come together in conversation and we come together many times, most of the time, hopefully, in ways to be able to have discourse. We have conversations. We don't have attacks. And that's why, you know, my thing has always been say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't but don't say it mean. And it was very interesting. And this goes to I'm going to start off with controversial and then I'm going to get to the laundries in a second because I want to talk about a um, little bit about dog, dog the bounty hunter. And it was very interesting. And it's funny because some of you saw Duty Ron yesterday. He was fantastic. I love him. And and he said, you know, agree to disagree, which I, pff, he and I are on the same page. I'm bringing this up not because of that, but it was kind of like, oh, and then I went and saw something on my feed that was very interesting. A young woman said, you know, um, I can't, I, I once respected you, basically. I'm just going to give you the gist of it. I once respected you, but I worry about you because dog is a, and she went into like, um, some things this guy was, right? Like he's this, he's this, he's this, he's this. And she said, I worry that you would be, um, that you're looking at him as some kind of spiritual guru or leader, you know? And my response was, well, you're not worried about me. You're, you're angry. <laughs> you're, you're really like, you think I'm an idiot because I th don't think like you do. And honestly, isn't it better to say like the truth, like, you know what? And cause that brings us, okay. When we had that kind of conversation and obviously, Hey, Carrie, if I'm sitting here with Carrie, for example, and I'm saying, you know, Carrie tells me all that. Let's say she says, you know, I'm worried about you because 
she didn't say this. It's not her. Just want to. So she said, I'm worried about you because you like this person and he, you know, he's evil or he's this, 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 and or you think he's some spiritual guru. And I, and I'm like, you know what it sounds like? Girl, it sounds like you're, you, you're angry at me and you think suddenly I'm stupid because I don't think like you do. Now, what happens from that, right? If we're in person, it gives the other person an opportunity to say, no, I don't, which we know isn't true, but, or to say, you know what? You know what? I, I, I guess I am saying that and I don't understand why. Why would I be thinking you're stupid? Because I see this person this way and you don't. So therefore, either I'm missing something because I respect you or I have to question myself. Now, bear with me because there's two things in the world, right? There are, and this is very important because there are two real reasons that people go into upset. And we can just break it down to this. Now, there's a lot of different reasons. I don't want to get into, you know, awful things that happen to people. That's not what I'm saying. But basically, when people go into upset, it's because they're afraid of losing what they have or not getting what they want. And I really want to say that, you know, Sarah said honesty is the best policy. And yet, right, we want to say, you know, honesty without kindness is cruelty. So we have to be really careful. Like by when I say careful, it's like, what are my motives in saying this? What is my motive behind saying to somebody, I thought you were smart, but, you know, now that you've said this, I don't think so. Well, what's that motive? And when we break that down into the motive, it's like I'm mad as hell. This this woman is really mad at me because she thought I was exactly like her, right? Because we like we like people who either we think are like us or help us think about ourselves in a in a way that isn't mean. You know, people who are are scolding all the time, they're gonna lose points. They're gonna they're gonna lose who we are, right? So I think it's who we think of them as. So I think it's important. You know, people say to me, you know, about church. They go, "Do you go to church?" And I say, "You know, I guess I stopped going when when they would stand up there and tell me that I was bad." And because see, for me, coming from a family of alcoholism and, and trauma, if you will, which everybody has in their own way, um. You know, I just I didn't want to go somewhere where they were telling me I was bad and had to be good. You know, Martin Luther King said this, and this was the quote I used with this woman, and I thought it was really well well said, which is there's a there's a bit of good in the worst of us, and there's a bit of evil in the best of us. And I think that one of the things we have to say, you know, um, and I just was uh let's I get this from folks in the Christian church. I love that blue fit. I love that you're saying this blue flame. I still love the church and I'm told not to get offended. Well, here's the thing. Remember I just said, if you were here, I just said, afraid of losing what you have and not getting what you want. And for me, if I look at it like going to church and having somebody say that to me, what comes up for me is that thing of like losing what I have, which is it's taken me years to kind of not see myself as like a bad person. You know, I do things that are, questionable at times like anybody but you know sitting there and being reminded all the time and even when I'm teaching you know when I'm working with people the, the honor for me in in working with others is that let's say you have some you know person a has something going on and they go on about something that that's really difficult for them and I'm just gonna say it has something to do with uh, their mother all right what happens in that oh it's gonna be a good segue to the laundry mom okay what happens with that is that if you have a difficult relationship with your mother and you're sharing in a little group, let's say, about it, I always set a ground rule that is, listen, when someone shares an issue that's painful for them, we honor their process in terms of it's best not to go up to them and go, you know, that thing about your mom, you, you'll, you'll feel better. Or um, it, it's the reason I say this, okay, and there's a reason behind it, is because I don't want to put that person back into the state of feeling bad about themselves because what good is it? Why do I need to make you feel bad to see the good? Why do I have to do that? Well, I don't have to. So I made a choice that I was going to look at things with the eye of what I felt was um, 
was a, a way of helping people grow and become the best of who they could be. And so that doesn't put down the church, you know? Um, and, and I think that, I, I think that um, my mother used to say this too, and I think there's something to it. And listen, church is a community anyway, you know, and we know some communities are dysfunctional. I don't care what they are, right? <laughs> I mean, okay. So my mother used to say to me all the time, you know, the temple is within you. You know, either you behave, and this is what I took from it, either you behave in a way of that Christ energy or you don't. You know, there really is, remember what I said, you're either afraid of losing what you have or not getting what you want. And you see, the thing is, is that by going into church for me, this is just me, when I, and by the way, this isn't all churches, but it was the ones that I went to. When I went in and they said, well, you're bad and you have to repent. And I'm like, can you tell me why I'm bad? Like, you know, you're a sinner. Okay, I, I know that. But what, because you see, when you have that built into you from your family, and it's again, and again, and again, and again, over time, you kind of go, okay, maybe I really am bad. And so what happens is, as you build up your self esteem, I mean, at this point, I could go in and go, okay, I see the point he's making, or she's making, I can see that. But you know what, why? I don't, I don't want to do that. Now, do I have faith? Yes, I do. God's in charge. That's my big thing. Okay. Um, and even when I read cards, it's always like, you know, I bring God into the conversation. It's white light. And I think it's really important to, you know, to really honor uh, other people's ideas. Now, this is where we have, and I'm going to talk very specifically in here about, you know, how YouTube is more valuable to me than anything I'll ever see on the mainstream media. And I, I have to say that to you. I get up in the morning and I say, okay, what's trending on new YouTube? Who's saying what? Okay. And the reason I do that is because I know I'm going to turn on mainstream media and they're going to tell me why I should like something or why I shouldn't like something. And you know what? I'm sorry. This, this is not decoration folks. I have a brain in here. I make up my own mind and so do you. And in any given moment when I'm in upset, you know, I can step back and go, hmm, I'm really in upset here. What's that about? So I wanna go to uh, the idea of dog, the idea of the laundry family and the idea of, you know, really having the, your own ideas and not minimizing other people's position. So I really wanna, um, Let's see. Um, Pharisees do this. Um, you know, and I think something that's interesting about this conversation for me is that, you know, I don't I really think that church is, is great for people. I mean, I really think there are people who need communities and 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 that's the place they go to to be of service and and be a part of that God con consciousness and that conversation of the Bible. Those are things that they need to do. And I don't believe me when I tell you this, I don't minimize any of that. Whatever works for you. You know, as you know, I teach tarot. I teach a lot of this stuff because I have a deck. And one of the things I always say to people is you have to follow what's true for you. And ultimately, anything I do, any work that I do is about allowing people the space to get back to God. You see, because it's about your relationship with God. It has nothing to do with me. You know, and you've heard me say this when it's like, you know, when you get into a relationship, you're not in relationship with Mr. Smith or whatever. You're in relationship with God, yourself, and then that other person. Because we always have to be, we always have to have our priorities be alignment with something bigger than us. And that's the conversation I want to have. So let's go over to the idea of, um, and I keep, I, I'm vibing on this, so I'm going right to it. So let's talk about the laundries for a minute. Now, you know, a lot of people are going, I think, I think he's dead and all this. And I want to say to you that if he's dead, wouldn't the laundries know that? I'm just saying, I think, I think if we're, by the way, I kind of, I can't help it, but like, I hope I don't, I hope I don't offend anybody, but you know, there's something about the name Roberta. My, I had a friend growing up whose stepmom was Roberta and she really was somebody that flew to work on her broomstick. Okay. She was just not very nice. And so I have that idea of like, you know, Roberta being this like tight lipped person. That doesn't mean all Robertas are like that. I want to be clear, but it was just this image I have, you know, you kind of go, oh gosh. So when I look at Brian's mom and I look at Brian's dad and I see especially the way did you watch how he 
somebody put all these laundry baskets on their front lawn, right? And I was kind of going, oh, what's that about? <laughs> it's like, duh, right? And I'm going, how did someone put laundry? And I went, oh, because Walsh has been saying dirty laundry. So here's what I want to say to you. When I watched this man pick up all those baskets and I saw the rage in his body, like his entire body was in a rage, right? All I picked up from him was so much rage that I did, what I didn't understand in that moment was what is that from? Where is that coming from? You know, where are we, excuse me, who are we being? Like what, it kind of, it kind of shocked me. So I want to back up and say this to you that if he's that angry and we got Roberta, right? She's in the house. Is, is there any point if their son is dead to not say it? Think about it. Wouldn't you come out like for me, if I knew not would, if I knew my son was, was dead, which I think they know he's alive. Um, if I thought my son was dead, I would come out and say, I really think he's gone. And, you know, I'm sorry for any hurt this brought. And, um, we were following, we were following what we knew to follow. Okay. And, and, you know, in a sense, not that that makes it okay, but it really kind of gives you that feeling of like, if they know, and if their son is gone, wouldn't they say something? I don't know about you. Like, think about putting yourself in that position for a minute. If it was your son, first of all, it never would be, but if it was, I would, I probably would feel pretty angry that all these people were showing up and, you know, but I also would feel like if I knew my son was dead, I would just not be able to function. And I mean, I'm looking at, at the, these people walking in another house, like it's just another Tuesday or Wednesday. The other thing I want to say about this is that I think one of the most poignant moments for me was when uh, Laundry, the father, Father Laundry, <laughs> but I'm talking about church. And so Father Laundry is mowing the lawn, right? And we're watching him mow the lawn. And I'm, you know what it is? I'm watching with her questions at him and him, like literally, I don't know about you guys, but like if somebody was doing that to me and I'm mowing the lawn, I would at least give them a look or whatever. You know, um, I don't know what you mean with clickbait, Missy. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna give you a little time out on that one because I don't think that's cool. Okay. So if, if I misinterpreted that, I apologize. Um so here's what I want to say is that if we're looking at these people and that rage that's in them, I would really, I would really say that, um, you know, obviously we don't know enough. Obviously there's so much that, that we are discovering, right. As, as individuals and as people, as a community, right. We're starting to go, I want to talk about this and we're starting to realize, and this goes to bear with me because I'm kind of making a little segue back to what I meant about, um, about YouTube versus mainstream media. You know, when I listen to Nancy Grace and I listen to these people on TV, they're saying stuff that isn't as deep as the things I'm hearing by other creators here on the internet, you know, here on YouTube. And I'm not saying I got this deep stuff. I'm saying there are other people here who've got like, I can listen to them and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, because I'm really relating to it, right? So, as I say this to you, one of the things that I think is so important is that um, we have to recognize that we are being shut out of the conversation in mainstream media. And the more we're being ignored, the more our rights are ignored, the more our inability to have any say in what's going on in our world, the more we need connection. And I think who just said that pause just said somebody said it, but we need connection. We need each other. I'll get back to the parents. I haven't finished that yet. But the reason I'm saying this is because when we look at that and we go on YouTube, it's like, thank God someone sees us, you know. Um, someone, someone acknowledges like, you know, even when I, and I, I do this, I know, I know Ron does, but it's like kind of getting on and going, Hey, it's good to see you, Dawn. Oh, Sharon, good to see you. You know, those kinds of, for me, like when I see, when someone acknowledges me, it's like, okay, I'm real. And especially in a time when we're just, we're being treated like general population. We're not, there's nothing special about anybody right now. And I just think that's, you know, crazy. 
um, let's see, at, at the very least he needs doing, this should be solved first. I don't know what you mean. Okay, and he pulled up a sign saying, what if it was Cassie? Who's not speaking? Let's see. These people. Okay, I'm missing some of this conversation. Okay, but I do want to go back to what what uh, what was just said about the um, yeah doing your own lawn. You know, and I get that. I totally get that. People are doing their own thing, and you know, but you know what? I don't think they have friends anymore because I'm going to tell you something. As a friend, right? If let me put it this way, think about it logically, or just you know, for me, energetically, if they were my friends, right, I would like go, what the F, right? Somebody would say that to them. I'd go over and go, guys, you know, you look like so guilty and I don't know what's going on, but you better come clean. Or, or I would just be like, and obviously they'd be like, we're not talking to you, but I would be like, hmm, something's not right. So I don't know if, if I would actually back away from people like that. Have you ever done that? Like just it's not that you actually confront them, you just kind of back away. And and part of that is that, you know, there's something going on there that is so abby normal that it we can't even like think about it. I mean, think, you know, so let's talk about Carrie. Hi, baby. Thank you. Oh, I love her. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you for the super chat. I want to also say that um a conversation doesn't mean something's right or wrong. And it doesn't mean that exactly, inst uh, which the instantly digest said, start to distance yourself. Can you tell me if they're rich or not? Because you say that you do cards. The, I don't I don't need cards to tell you they have their own business. So I don't know what's going on with their business. Um, and I do read cards, but um, I don't read cards in the way a lot of people think that you read cards. You know, I bring in God and I do, I'm gonna do a, a live tomorrow and just kind of show you how I look at world events through uh, my intuition and give you an idea of what that is. So that's a different conversation, but I do want to um, say that what, thank you for that question though, uh, or comment. I, I do wanna say that um, I would distance myself from the laundries. I would definitely start to move away. Um, oh, Sherry, I'm glad you reminded me of that, thank you. Geranium, baby girl. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Uh, thank you. Okay, wait a second, Kim. Okay, is Sherry just said, um, okay, I want to put this up. If this is turning into a reality show, Brian needs needs uh, found dead or alive. Hopefully we can so we can find out the truth about um, about Gabby. You know what? I agree 100% with this. And, and the reason I said that in the thing about, um, you know, in the little blurb, I said, that it's turning into a reality show. And you know why it's becoming a reality show? Because the media is involved. You know, one of the things that happened uh, that I think we learned from, to me, the last big case that everybody was and their mother was doing was, you know, the Watts one, but there've been others, believe me. But um, I think the one when we're talking about this, it's such a sensational story. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, bizarre. And, and I think what really brought it to national attention is that the, the, the steps of it. All right. And, and I want to say this, a lot of people have made the comment on, on the, uh, on the feed, another one, uh, one, one person in particular said, you know, um, anybody who couldn't see that was domestic violence, uh, you know, even the basic, a uh, person who knows the basic psychology. They're talking about the um, the stop with the cops in Moab, Utah, when they stopped uh, Gabby and what's his name. But the, you know, what I wanted to say, and I think this is also part of it, is that I wrote to her, well, then change the laws. See, this is the thing. People, you, it's so easy to sit in the corner, right? And set, you know, Monday morning quarterback, as they say, and go, I wouldn't have called that play like that. I would have done this. But you know what? I don't know what I would have done. I know that if I was law enforcement and I had been trained to do my job a certain way, I would follow that. Yes, some of what those guys were saying was like old school and you're kind of listening to, you know, something. But that doesn't mean that they were doing their job incorrectly. What it means is it brings up the conversation around changing laws so that we can prevent 
as a society, this kind of thing happening so quickly so that it can be discovered what's going on with these people. See, I think that the issue is that we did not realize, you know, and, and I, I'm really glad Insightly uh, Digest said this because I'm going to say this. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen until we're in that position, right? So you don't know, right? Think about this, you guys. You don't know, like, if you're standing there and that's your job, right? Your job is to look for marks. Your job is to look at who hit who. Your job is to make that assessment. It's not to get into the, the deep psychology of it. And look, I looked at it too and I went, well, that's the law. He's the one with the marks. That doesn't mean that it wasn't something that was awful that happened. And it was. It doesn't mean that any of those cops or anybody making that comment are wrong. What it does mean is it brings up the need to have further discussion around when those cops chase these two down. There should have been an immediate call in to either bring out someone who's a psychologist or a, a, just a, change the law, you know, make the law. Hey, um, because this has been reported that there was something and you both tell the stories that are similar, it's fine. You have a 24 hour mandatory hold where you both speak to psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever it is. See, this is something that I think it's, I think that's the thing I'm trying to say is that we on YouTube can have a bigger conversation than just, you know, somebody just throwing away, well, someone should do something about that. You know, like, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, why not you? So that's what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I listen to some of these pundits on TV and believe me, some of them I really like, they're kind of cool, but others I go, really? Okay. So, um, and yes, Shay said, Brian killed a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, but baby said, what do you think of the Moab cop bringing up his ex-wife? You know what I think? I think that Cops are trained to gain rapport with people. And based on his training, he did what he knew to do. Because think about it. They get somebody in the box, right? And they want to like, hey, how you doing? Can I give you a cigarette? Can I help you? Can we go for a while? You know, they're just like old school boys. You know, so what we're watching is old inter in interrogation tactics, which is very effective in that way. But one of the things we're really seeing is that these two people, immediately should have been pulled off the road and put in a place where, because, you know, the thing that, that we get, and I know you guys will understand this is like when we're going somewhere, it's like, we just want to get there, you know, like, okay, I'm not going to delay my flight, even though they'll give me a free ticket. I'm just going to get on that plane because we're anxious. We want to go where we're going to go. And I can understand that was happening with these two, but I also think that there were so many deeper problems happening that, and I'm going to be honest with all of you, I missed it. I think a lot of people did, you know, we wouldn't have seen it in that moment because we don't know who we're going to be in that moment. Now, think about it. Now we might be someone different. You know, we might be able to, to, to verbalize it. And I think that's the key. Um, so it was fakery by the cop. I think he should have kept it professional. You know, I, I don't know, you know, and slightly, you may be right. OK, you may be right, but I don't think that that stop is necessarily here's where I don't think it's going to serve me. All right. And serve us in a sense. It doesn't matter what that personality did. The fact is the law was against Gabby. See, I think we have to look at it that way. The law did not save her life and it could have. So no matter what conversation these guys had, right, they could have like been talking about anything. The law didn't protect her. It didn't. And the fact is that it was he who looked like he was the victim. So even though we can go, he wasn't the victim, but we can see how it would appear like that, right? Because you have to remember, cops are trained to look at what they see and what they hear. So they're looking to hear certain things. So by, by him going, yeah, you know, my wife, da, 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 he's hoping that Brian will turn around and go, oh, yeah, you don't know what I put up with her. And and they're trying to get him to spill his beans. You know what I mean? Like, Whoa. so you really have to think is that they are, I don't, I, I missed some of what you said. I don't know. They are honed through it all. I don't know what that means. So say it again. Um, yeah, the park ranger talked to Gabby. Um, and here's the thing. We have to remember that it's, isn't the law that if hands are put on anyone in domestic, it's immediate jail time. Um, okay. If 
they can yes yes it's actually not jail time it's an overnight hold in in wyoming where they were so the cops made a call and they made the call thinking they were helping gabby because had she been hauled in and put in for overnight that would always be on her record well and we don't know if her being in, in and by the way um Brian would have been able to come in the next day, dropped any charges against her, and then she would be free. So the way the law is set up is it's kind of like, okay, so you're going to give a crazy person, Brian, 24 hours just to cool down. That He was already, if you've ever seen someone who's manic, right, and you've seen them during their nice period, well, when they go into crazy, it's like, he was already in that, right? He's already in that. And by looking at the controlled rage of his parents, how can you see anything else? I mean, for me, that was like, so when we look at the cops, I think that the way to look at the cops, and if you think of it like, forgive me for putting it this way, but if you think of that as when a, when, when, um, when a football team plays a game and whether they win or lose, the coach will sit there with the films and they're going to go over, hey, this would have been a better move. This could have been improved here. Because if you just slam the cops because they're idiots, that's not going to serve us. That's not going to change. If you sat there and said to players, you know, you were a real idiot with that run. Like, <laughs> how'd you drop the ball, idiot? You know, like we could scream that at a TV <laughs> when we're watching a game. But the reality is that I, it goes back to what I said at the beginning about the Martin Luther King quote, which is there's there's a bit of there's a bit of okay how can I say it? there's a bit of good in the worst of us and there's a bit of evil in the best of us. So I think we have to say that if we are saying this is okay for cops to do, we have to then kind of step back and look at it as you know what. There are some things that I really think were very smart ideas that would actually serve us and the police force, you know. Um, and I, I do think that they missed the boat on that. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's not their fault. It's that we need to change the laws. We need to get together and say, wait a second. You know, this is where something would be Gabby's law. You know what I'm saying? Just like John Walsh created Adam's law. And and the Ooh, truth bumps. The reason I say that, you know, Gabby's law would be something along the lines of if a woman is crying, if a woman is crying, period, and she's oh, we've been fighting all morning. That's an immediate red sign, like the red signs, like, you know, and I'm going to share this with you. It, it's one of those. I don't know if anybody's in AA or has, you know, has been sober. One of the things I want to say about that is when you're getting sober, they give you a list of questions, you know, Um and the questions the cops were asking Gabby were making that assumption that she was the, um, how do you say, the, the victimizer, right? The one attacking Brian. But that's what the training was telling them to do because Brian had the scratches, right? So, and Brian plays it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something that I, I really now understand at a very deep level. Psychopaths, they can play it like nobody's business. They make us look insane. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, we look like crazy people. I remember, and I was involved with someone who was crazy, and I can't say too much about that um, because I'm still scared of them. But I think that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter in the sense that these people would have been back together. So what we need to do is say, okay, wait a second. You know, if I sit down and I say, um, so, you know, under Gabby's law, I have to ask you these questions. So bear with me. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you needed to get away from this person to cool off? You know, like ask these questions that really the cops do ask questions in interrogations that are leading. And what they were doing was asking the questions based on how they've been trained to spot it in the field. And I think that, you know, they did what they needed to do. But I think the minute you see something like that, it's like, you know what? Gabby's law. We've got to bring somebody in. I'm so sorry because we can't tell who did what you hit each other. See, this is another thing too, is that because Gabby admitted hitting him and he admitted grabbing her, right? But he wouldn't admit hitting her. See, he kind of, you know, and what I'm saying is the minute each of them admitted laying hands on one another, there's a problem.
because you see, this is like, it's not, it's not like, oh, he hit her. It's like, she said, oh, well, I was hitting him. What, what? Like, yeah, because you're so angry. But you see, the person who's angry isn't the angry one. She was, I'm getting the vibe. It's like she was so, her terror was about being not knowing what to do. Okay, if, if I may say, a lot of people, she was so frightened. And I would say as a woman, it's kind of like you go into a fear, like a, a, a desperate fear because you don't know what to do. Like, what do I do to help, right? You know, men want to fix it, but women want to help. And it's like, sometimes that's the worst. Let me see. Um, let's see. Um, I love the conversation, by the way. Sometimes, guys, the best conversations on the, um, you know, on the on the chat. Uh, Caroline just said, uh, psychopaths have a gift for deflecting blame and shaping people's perception of their victim. See, and I think that, um, I think that, you know, Brian had this knack for being the good guy, right? Because he's just a mild manner guy, uh, a.k.a. he's a sandal wearing, you know, unemployed idiot. Yes, I said that. Shh. Just between us. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just joke all the time about that. You know, guys who wear a full suit and pair of sandals like Birkenstocks. It's just this running joke I used to have with my girlfriend. So let's see. You should make the list of questions. I think you have good ideas. Emma, I think that's a really good idea. Maybe I'll um, I'll do a live about it and I'll, I'll share what my questions would be. And then like, have you guys compare as well. Do you want to come up here? I know what you want. Get up here. Here's where he comes. It's Gavin. Hey, Gav. Do you want to say hi to everybody? He was like... What? I know. Is it your day today? All right. He knows he wants to go out. Okay. All right. He was scared because he thought I was taking him somewhere. Um, I think I will do that. You know, I think if we come up with like just a list of questions you would ask somebody that that are that's really right there. But you see, I don't want to throw the cops under the bus because it's Brian who murdered her. It isn't them. And and could it have been prevented? I don't know. How many victims go right back to their attacker and get killed? We can look at this one after another, that the woman gets put into such a desperate, I don't know about you guys, I can feel it in my stomach. You know, you get that, you're so desperate because you're like, I don't wanna lose. Remember I said the two greatest fears right at the beginning of this, I said, the greatest fears we have are losing what we have and not getting what we want. So remember, losing what we have is big for women. For men, it, it can be either really, but I mean, in this case, it's she was afraid of losing what she had, which she thought was a great relationship, probably because he kept telling her it was. Um, and then let's see. Um, yeah, exactly. Let me look at some of this. Um, I'm telling y'all, it doesn't matter what the questions may be. She won't, she won't tell on him and leave him until she's ready. You know what, Kim, I agree with that too. But I do think that it's, there's a way, just like they do in interrogations, right? The cops are brilliant at this. This is what they're trained to do. So even if they can ask some, some pointed questions that just bring out a response, you know, um, and just say, hey, um, Gabby, have, have, have you been diagnosed? With, uh, with OCD? Where did you get that idea? You know, there are things that she said that you can ask questions of. And she said, well, not really. But, you know, Brian and I, like, we joke about all the time about how I'm OCD, right? You see, women won't tell on their partner, but they may kind of like try to make light of it, you know, of like, well, we joke all the time that, you know, I'm this way. I've seen this with abused women, haven't you? Where they go, well, you know, Joe says, I'm a bit of a klutz. How many times have you heard that in like all of these like, you know, true crime shows? And you're like, don't listen to that. <laughs> you know, and meanwhile, that's what happened. Um, yes. How didn't the police notice his lies? I think this is great. Um, hold on one second. Mary just said this. How did the, the police uh, not notice his lies about not having a cell phone? And then he pulls it out of his pocket minutes later. He, he went in to get it. or so, I, It was very confusing to me. And it's kind of like, the cops did ask him, you see, and he did have an answer. And his answer was something along the lines of, and bear with me because it's like my brain is kind of on this, but what he said was, well, you know, it's not, it's just like something I have for calling. Like, in other words, he had probably had a, he was calling it like a burner, but then he did have a cell. So I agree with you. It's very confusing. Doug, so good to see you. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. Uh, New York's finest wasn't there. Oh, Catwoman, you're so right on. And, you know, here's the thing. And think about it this way. 
I'm not going to I'm not going to put those cops down because, first of all, they're underpaid and underappreciated, all of them. All right. But one thing I am going to say about it is that there is something that I think the the black community really got right when they were talking about cops and all their complaints. Now, bear with me, because I don't think anybody's 100 percent, but I do think that there was something very important about why not have, you know, mental health hotlines where, you know, you can or even places that we should create where people can go and get get a reality check. And even if you just call it, you know, real, your reality check and you just come in and you discuss completely anonymously your relationship, that's so important because the biggest thing women have is the fear of retaliation, right? Um, she feared him way more than the cops. Um, Dawn, I don't have a phone. <laughs> She's so funny. Uh, let's see. She told the cops to make sure he, wait. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. I hit an abuser before because of the devaluation of the things I love. You hurt my child. I'd hit that person. I think that's a really important point too. Um, Gabby's sticking up for him. Yes, you know, and, and Hillary said something. I think this is a really good point. And I think this is typical of most abusers. Thank you for this comment, Hillary. Gabby was sticking up for him because she knew if she didn't, she'd pay later. And, you know, I think there's something else. If you think about it, maybe she was afraid of him, but maybe she was more afraid of losing him. See, we have to look at the desperation that was going on with Gabby. She was at, at this, like, a breaking point. Now, we can't really know what was going on with her, but I think she knew what was going on. And what I want to know, too, is did she tell her mom? And also, I had this hit, and I wasn't going to go into it too much, but um, just about her dad and that, you know, I don't think she really went into it with her dad because I think that father, I know, guys, I know I would have been on a plane. All right. If it was me, if my kid said, well, I feel I'd be like, OK, uh, honey, where are you? I'm flying in. I'm going to find you. All right. Because any parent that hears that a, a child doesn't feel supported by their their mate and they're out on the road and they're crying and they're, something's wrong there. But I don't know about the closeness of Gabby with her family. So that's part of the problem, too, is that, yeah, of course, they're they're talking all the time, but she was living with his family. So it was a little confusing. And I don't want to throw her parents under the bus. Um, let's see. Haven't heard it. You should know more than me. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just see something here. I'm, I heard somewhere the female ranger was so distraught that she can't even see any of the footage. You know, you're probably Miranda, you're probably right. Um, I know for me, if I, if, but here's the thing, if I saw that, see something, say something, right? I would I would kind of go to my superiors. I think something's really wrong here, you guys. And I'm worried about this couple. I really am. I think we need to do an SOS. Something needs to happen. Um, and I want to I want to just address this because she came from Planet Claire. I like that's really cute. She just said this and I think it's great. Um, there's such an increase to women disappearing during this pandemic that talking to your daughters has become a necessity. Let them know being hit by a man is not okay. No relationship is worth that. You know, and I think that's true, but there's subtleties that we're missing. We're missing them. And by the way, if you like this video, wait for the pillow, subscribe, and please hit the bell. And also please hit a like on this, put your comments below when it's up later be great. Cause I love to, I respond by the way, if you're like, if you say oh, da, 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 most of the time, I'll either give you a heart or I'll respond. Cause I love that. I love the conversation that's going on. Um, and this is the thing that what I want to say about that, that, uh, that stop after that stop, that relationship was forever damaged. Trust was gone. Think about it. Trust was gone. And, and then going into that, you know, going into that, like, cafe where he's like behaving that way there i would have been like uh-uh uh-uh see here's the thing that i wonder and this is the thing i think in different areas of the country you're not exposed to that as much so you're not going to go call 911 and go you know something could you guys come over here i think there's something really wrong with this person and his girlfriend's crying and i just suspect something you know i think that then it's not so much a dom you know like that domestic as it is it's kind of like a domestic but it's you know bringing a cop who's who has some kind of 
uh, I almost said like, a, I almost said an intuitive, but I, but a good therapist, a good, uh, a good social worker has a, a, a sense of intuition about things. Um, let's see. And I think, um, ex exactly. Most of us do see something and say something. Um, yes, yes, yes. You know, um, I have a feeling though, I've been having dreams about this. I don't know why I'm having dreams about this one. And I don't want to go into too much of what I've heard or anything because it's, you know, kind of personal for family stuff. And I don't like to, I know that's funny here. I'm talking about the family. I am talking about Gabby, but um, what, what I see around him are a lot of evergreen trees. And I, I, that to me says North Carolina, but I feel that the parents are very much aware of where he is. Just my vibe. Um, maybe uh, Carrie said, maybe a law stating family or friend needs to be contacted. See, I like this. I'm going to put this up because I wonder what you guys think of this. You know, if there was kind of a, a law that someone, do you have a friend we can call and ask about, you know, just see, just have them check in with you, you know, and that would mean the police officer calls the friend and says, uh, what's your experience with this relationship of them? You know, friends are going to tell you what's going on so fast, right? And I can't help but think that some of the people came out of the woodwork just like, you know, for the sensationalism, but, you know, I I can't get into that. But I, I want to say that um, I do think that's a very good idea, uh, Carrie. What do you guys think? I think it's really good to have something where, you know, if, if a nine, and we can have a simple criteria. If a 911 call has been placed, witnesses have seen something, and you still see the rule of three, right? If you see three markers that indicate something, number one, you track them down, they're still crying. Number two, there's a 911 call. Number three, you, you've you talked to people on the scene of where it happened because that one cop did. Then you get there and all these other things are going on. I think you should have the strike of three where when you get to those three things that you witness, I think it's just very simple. Like, okay, guys, you know, I'm sorry to say this to you, but we do have to bring you with us. Um, someone will bring your car and we're going to find you a space for the night and, and some someone some uh, someone to talk to about what's going on, because we want to make sure that everybody's safe. That's it. Um, it uh, let's see. I don't understand this. Died 27th after after the Mary Piglets. He was in a foul mood and G Gabby went back in, to the restaurant to say sorry. OK, about Brian. He was fuming. I think. That's what happened. And by the way, I do want to mention this um, because I know a lot of people have talked about the autopsy and I just saw what you saw. But something the coroner said really hit me. And I've wanted to say this for a few days and I haven't said it. OK, here's the thing you guys need to know. There's a word that was used. And this word was something that really was I was looking up the you know where it came from and um, the word throttle. You know, my dad would say that when I was a kid, he'd go, I want to throttle you, you know, like, meaning I'm mad at you, like, you know, but it was more than I'm mad at you. I'm going to take you and shake you. And I had said uh, to someone, and I don't know who it is. I said, I just keep seeing him shaking Gabby. And then when that came out, um, he was throttling her. Throttling is like the shaking, you know, it's like, it's like the throttle, right? You kind of let loose and think about that. It's like you are when you're flying a plane, you're pulling back everything. You're throwing everything at that energy to take off. Whoever murdered her, she was throttled. Now, it took them three weeks to do all this stuff. I want to say that I think that for them to say right away it was a homicide um, that means to me that something was visible right away. Something was visible that, you know, she was throttled. And when you throttle someone, you're like, you're putting every ounce of rage into that moment. So I think if we go back to looking at the parents of laundry, and I'm going to talk about that to, um, right Hillary Jane just said, my dad too. I wish I had the support of family and friends due to what I've gone through. The processing of everything is very painful. It is painful. And, you know, I, I want to just validate that. You know, I went through years of, of working with this stuff. And I think I've shared some of my stories on it. But one of the things that I've learned is that, um, that there are ways to perceive things so that I can, I can have a comprehension 
of how what I've been through can help others. Because one of the things that happens, and I know you guys understand this, if you've been abused, right? If you've been, you know, somehow abused by your family, let's just say, you know instinctually what it looks like, you know? So um, that's an important thing. Okay, I wanna just go to some of the comments here because I think they're so good. Um, uh, baby bus, you're getting into uh, the the Watts case, which I am. I'm gonna work. I'm working on the multi generational healing chart, meaning their family charts. So that's a different thing. Uh, once a woman is safe and out of the situation, they can begin to decompress. See, this is the key. You cannot process something when you're in the room with your batterer. <laughs> you know, and and somebody mentioned the Watts case. Shanann running back to that. It's like because it's like you want to help. You want to fix it. You want to make it better. You want to do everything you can. So Gabby's like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And yes, Kim, they did spend the night apart. But a night apart is not is not any uh how can i say replacement for having for having a conversation with a professional because that rage that was locked in that boy i'm gonna call him boy you can imagine that that was another what 10 days 20 days i mean think about this how strange is it that it was the same like within a day or two of when the Watts murders took place, not years before, but look at the time period that took place. Um, so I think we're kind of looking at things that are like, that have a sequential message. And I always say that God, you know, um, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. So when, when I see him show me like, you know, if I'll be, I'll be driving and thinking and going, <sighs> Ugh, I'm so annoyed that I just, I really shouldn't be driving at this moment. And it's like, I look up and it says, you know, find God, be peaceful. And I'm like, okay, I get the message. You know, like sometimes I, my thing is a lot of times I'll just say, you know what, God, I am pissed and I don't know what to do. And I need a billboard to show me because <laughs> I'm like, and that's what happened. I got a billboard. I get so many billboards. Okay. Um, let's see. You know, I think that what we have to look at and, and the Watts case is very different in that sense, but I think Shanann's uh, confidence and her personality uh, was bigger than anything uh, Chris could have been. And that's problematic, which is kind of what, you know, Gabby was um, kind of hard in the middle of a small town. Yeah, I think um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Mary Rose, but I think in the small town, um, even if it's like one of those things where I am very sorry, we have a mandatory three day hold and I don't care what you're doing, where you're going. If you're going to your own wedding, it's a three day hold. You know, you can make phone calls, but you have three days of sitting in, you know, in a place with a therapist. Um, and let's see, uh, do, do, do. you know, and here's the thing. I think the Dalai Lama said it best. And I'm not, believe me when I say this, it's not a great quote I'm going to give. It's a good quote from him, but I don't remember it exactly. But it's something to the effect of somebody said, well, you know, um, what do you think about family? Do you feel like you missed out because you didn't have family? And he basically said, family is not everything it's meant, it's made out to be. And I think we have to remember, you know, Black Rose, I love you. Um, thank you. You know, the, I'm going to just, please remember, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like our conversation. I want to continue these also in, I'm actually thinking of doing like a group where, you know, when you, you have the member thing where we get on and we can all have this conversation with each other. A friend of mine is doing that. And it's fantastic. I enjoy it. Um, and exactly, listen, the most dangerous moment is when a woman has made up her mind to leave. See, and that's the key. I can't tell you how many friends, well, I have a few, that have made up their mind to leave. And, you know, they've had to be like very, oh, I love you. And I'm, you know, because they have to be so exactly how they were, you know, because these guys pick it up. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. I just, this is fabulous, by the way. You guys have great comments today, and I'm really enjoying this. Um, if we didn't get to see the body cams of police reports on Moab stop, could have totally been conveyed wrongly. You know what? I'm glad you said that she came from the planet Claire. I love that planet Claire. Um, you know, I'm glad you said that because there's something about seeing it that we can go, oh, now we see it. But also we're in a we're in a time warp. Think about this. Everybody out there is we're seeing something happen. OK, we're seeing something happen and they're going, that's not happening. 
you know, and I can think about like, and I'm just going to use the border as an example. You know, we're seeing visual of all these people crossing the border and then nobody's coming here. <laughs> it's like, well, that's kind of the crazy making that I grew up with. So if you grew up with any kind of like, you know, say as I do not say, you know, do as I say, not as I do, you're going to be like, oh my God, this is crazy making, right? So you're right. Um, wonder what Gabby was doing when Brian came home the first time. I'm glad you're mentioning that, Hillary Jane, because I'm hearing different reports on that, that Brian did go home and then Brian didn't go home. I'm very confused on that because the way, and here's the thing, the way everybody was like painting, you know, her was that she has trouble being alone and it just didn't make sense to me. Um, Miranda brought up a very good point. This is a good thing. I'd love to have a conversation on this as well. Um, we, you know, today I don't want to, but I think this is a good point too. This is something I think I'd like to have a group discussion in because I think it'd be really fun. So anyone thinks it's crime passion, unplanned attack due to rage, or is there anyone out there that believes it was premeditated, even if he only knew for a few days that he would do it? I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to say, and, and, and I, I wonder about that because I actually think that his level of rage was beyond what could be anything that was stopped. Um, because when you throttle somebody, right, you're like in, you're like full, you're like pedal to the metal. You are not even in a mind that would, that would be, um, how can I put it? That would be able to stop. And, and this is something that concerns me about, um, about Brian Laundrie. If in fact he did go home for a few days, and I don't remember, if anybody knows that for sure, that would be great. Because I don't, I remember saying it. Somebody said, no, that didn't happen. You need to reach rock bottom. Okay, Lisa said this, uh, you know, or have years away from each other to comprehend the reality. Uh, years with therapy and you still don't understand. I think with some therapy, I agree. Um, and here's the thing I want to say is that, you know, I think therapy is great and I think it's good for some people. And I think that we all will be able to hear the message from someone, whether it's like the work I do with people or whether it's like a therapist. And a lot of times I'll send somebody off to a therapist because I'll be like, mm. I remember a woman coming to see me, you know, because I the way I do readings is much different. And you'll see that when you see uh, the thing I'm going to do tomorrow night, um, tomorrow at four uh, our time, my time, Eastern. Um, because you'll see that it's not like I'm doing a reading of your future. It's more like this is what I see the energy is is pulling, and you're gonna you're gonna get to see. Up, I pull back the curtain a little, um, and I think the point Lisa's making, which is very well said, is that you know it can take. I don't want to sit on a couch for seven years and try to figure out why my mother didn't like me, you know, or be validated that your mother loved you. You know, I know my mother didn't love me because she didn't love herself. You know, it. You, we have to look at it like, you know, suddenly it's not going to be, she loved me and you know, she didn't like herself. Oh, um, thank you, Shay. Thank you. Yes. Um, and you know, I always say this God's in charge. So thank you for that reminder. Um, and I, I like that Lisa, I love that you said that cause that's so true. Um, Sunflower, I'm glad she said this. This is so great. You know, there was a time and I know that lately, um, I, I think that lately we've kind of had a bad rap with a lot of the reality TV and I want to, I want to get back to that for, for a few minutes and then I want to, cause I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be uh, out at 615. So, um, I have a heart out. Let me see. Sunflowers just said, Oprah saved me. I remember an episode when she said, just because you love someone doesn't mean you have to live with them. You see, that's what we need. We need ideas that will help us grow to that next level. We don't need somebody telling us how we should hate other people or why they're wrong. And, and I want to get back now. This is like a good little segue over to John Walsh, uh, over to Dog. When we look at both of those people, um, you know, um, the thing I want to say about it is that, you know, John Walsh lost his son and, uh, and he created Adam's law and this was his story. His story was he was going to bring terrible people to justice and he used a platform on television to do it. So whether you, think it's all a show or whether you think they shouldn't be involved or what have you, I have to tap, you know, like, you know, tip my head to there are people 
that wouldn't have been brought in maybe as quickly if Walsh hadn't been involved. And I think he helped a lot of people over the years because, see, Walsh understands what it's like to lose a child. And that's something that you can't get everywhere. You can't buy that. You can, you know, it's like somebody saying to, to, to me, you know, when my dad died, oh, I know how you feel. And I'm like, but your parents are alive, you know, <laughs> like you can't know how I feel. Like, in other words, you can kind of understand or empathize, but you can't know my feeling unless you've walked in my shoes. And I think that's something that what that reality TV, if you will, at the time brought us is somebody who who walked in those shoes. So he never pretended to be law enforcement. He was angry. Oh, he's like, uh, are you almost done? <laughs> he knows. Wait, is it time to get the bally? Oh, yeah. Did you want to go? OK, so he wants to go play. That's why 615. OK, so. I'm also out of greenies. Shh. Oh, <laughs> did I get the eye? <laughs> yes, I did. OK, but what I want to say about both of these people that I and uh, first John Walsh is that you know, he has also talked to many families that we don't see on television. We don't necessarily see on the show. We just see the sensational part. But what we don't see is that they have helped people. And I can understand if I was a police officer and I felt that these people were involved or like messing up my crime scenes, I might be pissed. OK, and I may not like them. And at the same time, we can't just dismiss something because it's something that isn't normal or the, the the typical way to do something. Now, do I think that people who don't like them are wrong? No way. Uh-uh. You don't like them? That's great. Don't like them. Um, by the way, I want to just say thank you to a couple of people. Shimmer Soul, you're so sweet. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. And um, Teresa M. Um, let's see. Oh, you're in. Okay. She, okay. She's talking about um, the Chakra Wisdom Miracle. The Chakra Wisdom Toolkit. I have it right here. She's in week 18, so I'm just going to show you this. This is what she's talking about. Um, she's talking about the uh, Chakra Wisdom Oracle Toolkit. And basically, these were fables that um, angels, um, and it was always white light. It was always God-based. It's not like, you know, but um, these angels came and told me what I thought were silly stories. And then over time, they uh, I had written them all down. And then it's taken like 25 or 30 years to get them to you. And it became a bestseller. It was a whole big thing. But anyway, that's what she's talking about. And there is a, it's a 52 week journey. Thank you for that. Okay. What kind of dog? Mm, Planet Claire. Oh, they like you. I'm going to just show you. Look, look, Mr. Mr. There he is. He's a whippet. And it's really funny because his sister, I've been told, is having two babies. Little, little whippets. Okay. Um, I don't like Oh, Edelweiss said, I don't like how JW came out and said Gabby was beat to death before it was ever announced. I can understand that. I can understand that. And, and you know, I think that part of TV is TV sensationalizes it. You know, you have whippets? Nana. Okay. Cutesicles. Oh, he is a popsicle. He's a, you're a cutesicle. Blind of the day. And here's the thing you're going to find. You're going to find that people are going to be polarized by both of these, right? It's going to be either I love John Walsh or I hate John Walsh, or why is he saying that? And, and the thing is, is that the more sensationalized it is, the more people who spot these people are going to remember it. Think about this. Like if he's just going, yeah, and here's a crime. And this is a person that just uh, committed a murder of somebody else. Instead, he goes, this dirt bag did, 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 did. You know, and you're going, oh, yeah. And you want to, it's kind of like you'll remember it, right? And you'll, it will, it, when he said Gabby was beat to death, and we know she was strangled, but think about it. Throttling someone is kind of beating them. So when you're, when you're, you get in your head that he beat her to death, it's like, oh, my God. So you get even more mobilized to want to find that person. And I think, you know, I think Kung Fu Panda, woo, Kung Fu Panda, just said he's using his grief to help others. You have to admire that. And you know what? That's the point of all our lives is finding our wounding and then recognizing that we are here for a purpose. We're here to help others. It's kind of like help others find what we perhaps didn't didn't get 
you know, he couldn't rescue Adam and nobody could, right? Because we didn't know enough. And I think of Aton Pates, who was uh, who I remember so clearly because I lived in uh, in New York City at the time. He was a child that was abducted, and he was like the first kid on a milk carton, basically. So we're really talking about things that happen based on these losses. And you know, John John Walsh has helped a tremendous amount of people. Now, um, you don't like him? That's okay. That's okay. That's not going to erase him. That just means you don't agree with the way he's doing it. Totally fine. Um, Ah, uh, let me see if we can find some. Oh, let me tell you something about finding a whippet. Woo, it's very hard. Uh, in in the UK, they're kind of like, I want to say like, you know, Labradors here, you know, but finding them here, oh my gosh, I love this boy. Um, you know something? I'm glad you said that, Brooke. It was a hate crime. Um, the fables are in true crime? That's, that's weird. Let me, and I'll pull it out because um, she's talking about the, uh, uh, what do you call it? the categories I'm okay. John Walsh is a Capricorn. Dude, that says it all. Because you see, he's turning everything into his grief is turned into a business. But also check this out. Goats keep climbing. They'll keep going. They won't give up. You can say anything to them. There can be snakes, earthquake, fires. Capricorns are like, mm -hmm. you know, they will not give up. So that's super important. Um, yeah. And Shay just said he still might have beaten her because they can't say it all. I think there are things that they're not saying because um, it's it is the law in, you know, in Wyoming, whereas like, I don't know about you, but like we saw the autopsy or not the autopsy, the body of uh, Travis, you know, you know, oh, gosh, I can't think of her name right now. Jody, Jody Arias. They would they had that on the Internet. I was like, oh, my God, like I. Let's see. I think the beat statement may have come from what the witness said when he said, oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Shea Carson could be, but we may never know of it until trial. Yeah. I think that um, uh, you have to get a hold of the autopsy report and that's kind of a little tricky, but it can happen, but you know, it's, kind of, it's not legal. <laughs> I believe the coroner statement of strangulation. Yes, it was strangulation. And in fact, see, he's, she was, she was uh, murdered, right? But he said cause of death strangulation. But what he said, was she was throttled. And that's like, you know, like when you shake a baby, right? So that's the point. So I want to just come full circle and I want to close a little bit with the idea of Dog the Bounty Hunter, right? Because some people are like, I hate him. Some people are like, I love him. Some people are like, I don't agree. Here's what I want to say. Um, everyone, everyone who becomes famous is tapping into some consciousness that others want to see, whatever that is, right? Whether it's right or wrong. Um, and by the way, if you, I don't know where you are, Claire, let me know. Um, yeah, throttled is rage. Exactly. Kung Fu, man, you got it going on there. It is rage. And, um, you know, Brian, Brian Laundry. I'm going to come back to him in a moment, but man, I want to just wrap up this with, with dog. And I'm going to talk more about Brian Laundry. Um, I'm going to tell you that I, you know, they're thinking they're going to find something in the Florida swamp. Um, so either, can you imagine, this is crazy, but I'm going to say it. Could you imagine if the parents had killed him? Um, and by the way, I don't think Cassie is a good enough actor to like hide you know, to not say something, but I also feel like she is hiding something and it could be her own suspicions. Okay. So, um, all right. So dog, the bounty hunter. All right. What I want to say about dog is this. Um, it's very important that we understand that, um, if I were, if I were a law enforcement officer, I would not want him around me. Okay. And I'm saying this because, oh, I'm saying this because Gavin just unplugged the computer. <laughs> <laughs> now it's bad. I wouldn't want him around me. And I would feel like he was. So I know that um, that uh, Ron, uh, duty Ron, um, my pal said, you know, he does not, you know, doesn't like it. Blah, blah, blah. Now, here's the thing. And I respect that, by the way. It's totally like fine. Um, I feel about dog that 
Um, and believe me when I tell you, I maybe watched three episodes 10 years ago, you know, so I, I'm not some aficionado on him or his background. I did a little bit of research, but what I do want to say, I'm going to answer that in, in a moment, throttling and, and uh, strangling. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. So what I want to say about this is that Dog the Bounty Hunter um, when I watched him on TV and it was, it was a sensational thing. He was going after, you know, um, it's like, you know, he was going after like, you know, these guys who were like terrible criminals, you know, and, and it was kind of a very interesting show to watch right now. I think that anybody who's into law enforcement knows he has no right to arrest somebody. I mean, there's such a thing as citizens arrest, but I don't understand how that works. So I'm not going to get into it. He has no right to arrest somebody. Uh, he is, you know, in other words, Brian is not out on bail. So technically what would a bounty hunter want to find, you know, want from this something. And you can sit back and go, you know, this is like, you know, he's trying to get attention, right? But every, look, you know something, I don't know what his motive is, but I know this. I remember one episode and this is only, remember I said this, I know I've said this three times and I think fourth might be a charm. Martin Luther King said, you know, even the best of us have, what is it? The best of us, no, the worst of us have something good inside and the worst of us and the best of us, the best of us have something, wait, the worst of us have something good inside and the best of us have some evil inside. And so we have to look at it this way. Um, one of the things that I think is important in this and just I'm just going to kind of underline it and then get out of Dodge is that for me, I remember watching dog talking to a prisoner and um, and I, his wife at the time was talking to the woman who was beating him. So they were kind of separate. Excuse me. He was beating. And it was one of the more profound conversations because dog really understands what it's like to be a criminal. You know, he can speak to them at a place of I've gotten sober. I've been in trouble. Um, he's apparently been in trouble again. I, you know, a couple of years ago, I don't really know those circumstances, but you know, there's something about it. What AA says is that an alcoholic can always speak to another alcoholic, you know, a police officer can always speak to another police officer. So no matter where you are in your life, if you've been abused, you'll always be able to talk to somebody like me or someone who else who's had, you know, abuse because we get it. We we've been there. And so when you listen to us, when you listen to our stories, you kind of go, okay, maybe I can find God. Maybe I can find my way home. You know, I don't believe for a minute that Chris Watts found God. Don't even start me with that. But I think that, you know, there's a, there's a humanity that I saw in, in, um, uh, in, in dog that because he is, he has lived in his shadow side. Do you see? And a Kung Fu Panda, I don't know who you are, but you're fantastic. Let me see. What, if you cannot see your own shadow side, you can't control it or trust yourself. This is the key is that, you know, I know I've got my anger. Like, you know, somebody, I remember I shared this with you before. Like, somebody turned to my dad and said, You know, your daughter's very angry. He looks at her and goes, Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I think I told you about Tatsu in second grade. I was just kissing him all the time. Me and Tatsu, my little Japanese boyfriend. And my mom was like, calling the teacher and she said, I'll leave him alone. Because you see, not everything needs some kind of social justice around it. It's very important we get that, that, you know, sometimes we just have to believe people at, at surface value. And is dog rehabilitated? Well, I can't answer that, but I can answer that I can just see some humanity in him. That doesn't mean that he's brilliant. It doesn't mean that he's whatever. I just know that I I like the way he uh, he 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 speaks reverently of God, and I like the way he has been humble in certain moments. Um, so I, that's what I have to say, you know, um, but I just think it's important that I say that I don't hate dog. I don't love dog. There are moments that I saw the humanity in him. And I think that's the best way to put it. Um, because certainly I'm not a law enforcement officer, so I can't understand what it's like to have somebody trampling on your possible crime scenes. So there you go. All right. Um, I say he's trying for sure. You know, I'm glad you said that Kung Fu Panda um, because, you know, I do think dog is trying and I think that, I think that they care. I don't, I, when I say care, there's that other side that, that, you know, that little devil side of me that goes, 
I mean, really? He cares? He cares about his publicity. You know, so it's like, but I want to say that when I watch him, I feel that sincerity. And I, I feel his anger at Brian. And I feel John Walsh's anger at Brian. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't feel anything from these freaking news people who just spew out little sensational headlines with empty, empty conversation. Okay. I want the real deal. And, you know, with that, I think the most important way to come to that full circle, you know, Joy Reid uh, got this whole thing going about, um, it was started in 2006. I was doing the research on it. It's been around a long time. What is it? Missing white girl syndrome or something. And here's the thing I want to say about that. Um, you know, I, it's not that I don't care. It's that where are, where is um, uh, some of the people you know, when somebody goes missing, where is, uh, you know, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. He shows up at, you know, Sharpton. He shows up at everything. Why doesn't he show up and say, hey, we need to be, you know, investigating so-and-so's being missing, you know, or, and I think that's the point, you know, is that we have to remember that um, don't complain about someone else getting attention. Look at how you can get the attention for the people that are the forgotten people. And I do feel they're forgotten people. I do feel that there's people from the indigenous tribes who have been forgotten people. But, you know, if we look at history as well, you know, the reason the Indian population seemed to go down is because they married into the, uh, I want to say not just the white population, but they married into the, um, the colonies, right? So their population diminished, but they, we had, you know, Indians marrying uh, colonists. So you have to, you know, the colonials. So you have to remember that not everything is just an awful thing that's happened in that way. It's just that this is how things came about. Um, okay. I don't know who's saying throttling, but I, I agree with you. I do think that dog does feel that for the, the yeah, the Pepito family. Okay. Let me see. Uh, let's see. I feel that he empathized greatly due to losing a daughter. See, and this is something you have to understand. Those of us who have the experience of having lost a parent will always know what it feels like for somebody to lose a parent. Those of us who've lost a child will always know what it looks like and feels like to lose a child. And, you know, I think that it's very important that we recognize that, that, you know, these people have gotten involved because something moved them. They didn't have to. Listen, John Walsh was doing just fine going after some of these, quote, dirtbags, okay? But I think we have to look at, um, they brought attention to something that I think we all need to pay attention to, which is domestic violence doesn't have to, ha have to happen in the domicile. It can happen anywhere at any time. Um, Careful, Tori, you've not walked in their shoes. No, I haven't. I, but what I have done, High Flyer just said that, I haven't walked in their shoes. But what I have, what I do know is that you can relate better to people who have had that experience. So where, you know, for example, Al Sharpton, let him come out. I'm just using his example, but there's so many leaders now, you know, there are so many leaders in the black community that can come out, white community too. But I feel like, Joy Reid, why don't you start covering crime? Why don't you start bringing it out and telling us what's going on? Because you know what? We we care. I mean, look at the the two boys. Um, you know, I'm saying I want to say Cherish uh, and you know who I mean. The 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 two boys that that uh, went missing in California. We haven't forgotten them. Um, what drives money for the networks? All this have to be part of that that cultural change. I think what's happening though, Kung Fu Panda, is they are starting to recognize that they messed up because they've started a five-year dialogue of let's talk about the politics. Let's talk about how much we hate this guy or love this woman or, you know, the, what they've done is they have injected themselves so much into the conversation that they, they can't possibly be objective. They can't possibly report the news anymore. And so even when you hear someone talking about things, what what's the interest? Well, I'm interested when I hear obviously the coroner speak or someone who actually knows it. But when I hear some of these pundits just speaking what we found out nine days ago, it's kind of like, uh, you're a little, you know, you're a little off the wall there. You too. Thanks for that uh, feedback. Um, uh, high flyer. Thank you. Um, okay. Edelweiss said, losing a child is one thing. Losing one JW did has to mess with your head forever. And you see, this is what we have to look at is that 
These are people who made mistakes in their lives, maybe, or didn't, um, and they are doing the best they can. Um, you like them, you don't like them, it's all fine, you know? Um, I like that, I don't like that, but I, Emily just said this, it's, it's being called dating violence too in many courts, <laughs> much bond court. Oh my gosh, aren't we all like addicted to everything? Um, let's see, and I'm gonna see what any, let's see. And that's the thing, the grief needs somewhere to go. And, and you know this actually, uh, Teresa, is that I always say um, grief is love without a place to go. And so people can get trapped in their grief and never be able to make a change in their lives. And that's where the tragedy comes from. So it's when we look at someone like Dog or Walsh, or, you know, people that are out there trying to help, um, I think we have to look at it as, you know, they are using the grief that they feel to prevent you from ever having to feel it. And I think that that is a noble cause now, or, you know, a, a good, how can I say direction or what have you? Does everybody like what they do or how they do it? No. Um, you know, dog criminal. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Um, and I think that's important. It's like, um, let's see, Black Rose. I'm just. I wanted. To, I wanted to know too how your husband was. Um, okay. So, oh, Ridgecrest. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, unexplained recurrent miscarriage as a medical negligence or nearly killed me. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I'm just looking to see if there's. Um, I I want to just make the mention of what. Um, Somebody said, please don't talk about other YouTube creators. I hope you, are you talking about me? I don't know what she means. Um, I talk about my pal because I just think he's the greatest ever. So if you, you love Duty Ron, go check him out. If you haven't checked him out, go check him out. He's fantastic. Um, great to see you guys. And that's the thing. It's like one of the one of the most powerful things you could have in any friendship or relationship is the ability to say i understand why you feel the way you do and i want to just say that right here and right now i absolutely understand my dear friend duty ron and why he feels the way he does and i honor his feelings you know that that has that does not in any way my feelings about liking someone or having an understanding does not in any way diminish his stand on not liking it do you see that's important and that goes to the thing of like, we think sometimes that just because someone, you know, brings up something that's problematic, we go, oh, well, that's not as bad as this. It's like, it doesn't diminish the other. It means that we each have points of view. It's, um, oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, I love, you know, something I want to remind everybody, the duty Ron had, had been starting out too at the time I started out and we were like, you know, I like really supported him on my channel. I love him. I think he's great. So let's see. I've been grieving. <gasps> no, Dawn, I'm so sorry about your husband. Oh my gosh. That's awful. Yeah. You got to check out duty Ron. He's great. So, and here's the thing. I think it's important everybody that when you're on someone's channel, um, you honor their channel, right? And you kind of like honor what's going on there. So like I may come on to someone else's channel and say, oh, I think this or this, but I try to also pull, pull back because I don't want the conversation to be about me or what I'm saying. I want it to be about who's on that channel and what they're doing. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, there is a, there's a higher level of consciousness, blue flame, um, let's see. I'd like to know about this stand text. I don't know what that means, stand text. So check out. It's a crime. Okay. Um, just sub to him. Thanks for the recommendation, April. Ab yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm just going to say this. This is the thing. April just said, I just subbed to Duty Ron. Thanks for the recommendation. Of course. And we, we always recommend people we think are great because that's what we want to do. And, you know, I love different perspectives and different intuitive ideas. Uh, I remember when the two of you met in New York City. Thank you, Emily. Yes, uh, Duty Ron came to meet me and we did a live and it was so sweet. We had these like, like literally we were in this like, I want to say a big, uh, how you say a meeting room in, in, in my hotel because th there's just nowhere to meet, right? So we had, we took, the, you know how they have the the lamps? We took the lamps and put them sideways to get light on us. It was really kind of funny. So anyway, I want to say thank you for to everybody for joining today. And what uh, what's coming up next is uh, tomorrow night I am going to be doing at 4 o'clock. I'll be talking about um, 
be what I, how I see world events, and I'll be using the uh, chakra wisdom tarot cards, and I will be working with some of that. And um, what did she say? Awesome example of expressing the the last text. I'm sorry, hold on, I want to see this. Gabby's mother received, and she said she didn't think Gabby sent it. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, I I don't think uh, I don't think Gabby sent it. I agree with her. She would know. The mother knows. Trust the mother. Um. Yeah, it wasn't fake. It was just not from Gabby. Um, mm, 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 mm. Um, yeah, uh, Kung Fu just said it. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go out on this because this is really uh, how I feel about my friend Duty Ron. Um, I love that he has an old school perspective. I love that about him, and it's just fantastic. So remember that the point of the wonderful thing about YouTube is we can join different perspectives and find out who we are, you know, by, by, by saying, yeah, I agree with that. And, oh, this is an interesting point. And, and it doesn't define who we are. It just defines the idea of what's interesting to us in the moment, you know, and what do we need to know? Great conversation, everybody. Tomorrow at four o'clock, I'll be on and I will be doing another live this week. I'll let you know when I'm just scheduling things. And I love you guys. I'm just so happy to be back. I'm getting treat bumps. Woohoo. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm not worried about energy that way. They just, oh, great. Subscribe, hit the bell and join me. And I am going to be starting a, a group and I will let you know when it's on. Okay, Black Rose, I love you madly. Thank you for, for uh, joining me today. And everybody, I will see you next time. Be blessed.